Hello everyone and welcome! Some of Riot's stories are serious and some are funny. Then there is Mundo who puts a darker twist on the funny side. So without further ado, let's try to figure out what he even is. There are stories speculating where Mundo even came from. Some say they saw him as a baby, crawling through the Piltover marketplace and terrifying the upper class aristocrats with his foul smell. Others say he was born in Zaun and spent the first few years of his life sploshing through the sewers. Only one thing is certain. When he was roughly three years old, he arrived at the Zaun Asylum for the irreparably troubled. The other people at the asylum kept Mundo at a distance. But the asylum staff found the boy a source of constant fascination. They looked at him not as a child to be raised, but as a patient, a thing to be studied. Why was he purple? Who could have survived giving birth to someone this size? Within a year of his arrival, the doctors realized his skin was never going to change from its shockingly bright shade. When Mundo turned four, they witnessed his full strength in action as he crushed a dispensing pipe after not giving him his favorite candy, which was toenails. When Mundo turned six, they discovered his relationship to pain. He didn't seem to mind it, and in fact he actively looked for it. If no one kept an eye on him, he would stick sharp instruments into his shoulders. If he was placed anywhere near other patients, it would be a matter of minutes until one or both of them started screaming in agony. Soon the asylum staff got tired of merely observing Mundo. It was time to start experimenting. Whether they began their tests out of medical curiosity, a desire for scientific breakthrough, or sheer boredom is unknown. Whatever their reasons, the doctors unquestionably put great deal of effort into understanding what was even happening. Over the next several years, they tested his tolerance for pain. They would stick needles into his fingernails and he would giggle. They would put hot irons to his feet and he would fall asleep. Soon the scientific curiosity turned into frustration. They couldn't get Mundo to react negatively to pain at all and they couldn't understand why. Not only that, but whatever damage they could do to him healed itself within hours. Throughout his teenage years, Mundo's life consisted of complete isolation and routine torture, and he had never been happier. Soon the doctors became figures he looked up to. To Mundo, pain was passion, but for him it seemed like to these doctors it was their life work. As the years went on, their attempts to push his pain grew more unconventional. They began to dip his feet in acid and throw flesh-eating mites on his face. The asylum doctors were initially amused when the purple teen began to refer to himself not as Mundo, but as a Dr. Mundo. He stole a syringe and filled it with a mixture of cavern berry juice from the breakfast and god knows what from his chamber pot. Mundo make medicine! He happily shouted before jabbing the concoction into his own forehead. In time, however, Mundo grew tired of experimenting on himself. Later, many would suspect what Mundo's motivations were. Some assumed he was taking revenge for the years of torture. Others thought he was merely a psychopathic monster with no sense of morality. The truth, however, was much simpler. Mundo had decided it was time to put his research into practice. One night, Mundo snuck into the kitchen. There he found a massive meat cleaver. With this medical blade in hand, he went from room to room, operating on every patient he found with no logic to his method of treatment, other than what would amuse him the most at any given time. The next morning, every single person in the asylum was cured. Mundo donned the physician's coat from one of his victims. It ripped as he tried to pull it over his massive body. Mundo had realized his dream. He was a doctor. As a member of a long and illustrious line, he had to share his medicinal skills with the rest of the world. After so many years, Mundo walked through the locked doors and stepped into the streets of Zon, smile on his face and spring in his step. The doctor was in. 
Over time, people realized that walking through the streets alone during the night wasn't smart. Not only because of all the thieves and criminals, but also because of Mundo. It was the middle of the night and Mundo rolled out of his bed, which was a large wooden box filled with sharp knives and rusty nails. He brushed his teeth with a nail and ate breakfast, which was a cat. Mundo felt exuberant, he felt alive. Today was a fine day for practicing medicine. He spotted his first patient, selling shimmer drops in the streets. The man walked around in circle, shouting at everyone how shimmer drops would make their eyes roll into the back of their heads, and how everyone who wouldn't buy them this very second was a damn idiot. And if you gave him a bad look, he would swear to kill you and your family and your family's family. Mundo took out his notepad, a tool he often used to mark down his observations about patients. The notepad was large, yellow and imaginary. Patient exhibits signs of mania. Mundo would have written down if he hadn't been tracing random squiggles in the air with a meaty finger. Infection of a nervous system via cranial virus. He might have inscribed if he were capable of such a multisyllabic thought. Mundo cure head and face area good, he said to himself. The patient's name was Rank. He picked up his shimmer drops and headed home. He was hoping to buy some shoes with the money he got, but he was interrupted by a massive purple monster jumping out of the shadows. Mundo has results of your blood work! Mundo left his patient more or less as he found him, maybe without a limp or two. He decided to visit the Commercia Fantastica, a market specializing primarily in gearwork toys. Though most of the shops were closed, there was a lowly man walking down the street. He was singing a song about a Piltoven beauty and a shy boy from the Undercity who loved her. Though the man had forgotten most of the words, apart from big ol' eyes and gave it to her. An empty bottle dangled from his hand, and he looked as if he hadn't had a bath in months. Was this man affected by the same disease that had ravaged the shimmer drop dealer? Was this a virus? An epidemic in making? Mundo had to act fast. This was clearly a man in need of medical attention. Take two of these and talk to Mundo in morning, the purple monstrosity said as he tossed a meat cleaver into the drunk's bag. Mundo descended into Zon's sump level. If there was a virus going around, surely it originated here. There must have been a patient zero somewhere. If he could cure the first victim of this mysterious disease, he could cure everyone. But how was Mundo to find one specific patient in the sprawl of the sump level? What steps would he take to isolate, quarantine and fix this most suffering of Zonites? How would he… Then he heard something. Footsteps. A rhythmic clang of metal against metal. He followed the noise as carefully and quietly as he could. He wouldn't want to spook the patient into running away and infecting even more people. He found exactly what he was looking for. A young boy, no older than 15, probably, with a shock of white hair and a metal sword looking thing in his hand. He had some sort of hourglass tattooed on his face. Maybe a warning? A symbol that no one should approach him under any circumstances? Mundo knew he had found him. Patient Zero. It would be a complex operation requiring skill, planning, a careful eye and… You might feel a little sting, the creature said, leaping out. His enormous purple form hurling through the air, massive cleaver in hand, tongue flapping in the wind. The boy was surprised, but not unprepared. Anybody hanging in the sump knew to be ready for trouble at any moment. The kid had plenty of time to prepare. Nothing but time, in fact. To Mundo, this was a troublesome patient. He refused to answer Mundo's questions about his medical history, and he evaded Mundo's attempts to make him take his medicine. He repeated himself over and over again, perhaps suffering from a case of physical amnesia, and had no respect for Dr. Mundo's authority. It went like this for what seemed like hours before Mundo grew tired of arguing with the boy. He mustered up one final attempt at treatment. Wielding his precision scalpel with the artistry of a Demacian duelist. The words of his medical vows. Mundo fix all things. Mundo do medicine very hard. 
ran through his head again and again. His desire to cure this child filled him with purpose and determination. He swung with all his might. The treatment was a success. But then, somehow the treatment reversed itself. Whatever good Mundo had accomplished in his last attempt to a cure was suddenly undone. To Mundo's utter confusion, the child scurried away, utterly uncured. Mundo screamed in irritation. Why can't Mundo save all of them? He screamed to the sky. Not every operation was a success, Mundo would be the first one to admit. Still, Mundo tried to focus on the positives. Apart from his most recent patient, Mundo had helped an awful lot of people. He had done a full day's work and now was time to rest. As the sun came up, Mundo retired home and tucked himself into bed. Who knew what tomorrow might bring? Another patient to help? Another epidemic to stop? A doctor's work was never done. And that was the story of Mundo. I mean, I have no words for what just happened here. It was good to read a story that was less serious, I guess? I don't know. Let me know what you thought of this. If you enjoyed this video, you can leave a like below or subscribe with the bell button for future stories. I'll leave you with two links to the previous videos. On the left side, you will have the link to Blitzcrank's story and on the right side, you will have Caitlyn's story. And with that, thank you so much for watching this video and for all your feedback. You know I really appreciate it. And as always, thank you come again!